Okay, we are live. They will start. A very good evening to one and all present here today. Welcome to the second. in workshop session conducted by the film and drama club today's workshop will be based on a guide to watch a film by dr piyali gupta now i'd like to request our convener for the students activity cell dr shotarupa bandopadhyay to begin with the welcome address uh, a very good evening to all today we are extremely happy to have Dr. Priyali Gupta as our speaker here and the resource person for the workshop as well. And uh, I am personally very happy because it uh, worked out. Priyali uh, got time to be the speaker here. As to the formal introduction, Dr. Priyali Gupta is an associate assistant professor. Uh, currently posted in the postgraduate department of english in bethun college she has previously worked in chandnagar college and has postgraduate teaching experience at the department of english university of calcutta presidency university arstwild presidency college and bolan azad college for her academic record of having securing secured the first rank in pa honors MA and MPhil examinations at the University of Calcutta. She has been awarded the gold medal from Calcutta University, National Scholarship, Swati Bose Memorial Scholarship from Calcutta University, and also nominated for the President of India's gold medal for general proficiency. She has completed the diploma de la mode in French from. Lawyers, Francia, Kolkata. Her doctoral dissertation was on actress autobiographies. Her research interests include gender studies, Victorian literature, and women's autobiographies. She has completed a UGC minor research project on the intersection between disability and life writing, and has published papers in several reputed journals and books. and what makes her a perfect choice as a resource person in this workshop is she has studied film theory during her mphil course and teaches film theory with special reference to gaze theory at the pg level in bethun college and she also knows marathi and spanish and that becomes six languages really i think including hindi okay so this formal the formal introduction uh, without wasting any time uh, over to devoshri to conduct the session welcome priyali thank you thank you shatrupadi so i can begin i i can start now i they will see you you have to unmute yourself yeah okay okay uh, so thank you uh, uh yeah i'd like to request dr piyali gupta to start with the session now without wasting any more time thank you thank you devashri uh, thank you shatrupadi and uh, good evening everyone um shatrupadi thank you for that wonderfully generous introduction uh, your french pronunciation was also near perfect you know okay uh, let me uh, just begin today's session by congratulating the entire students activity cell for the wonderful work that they are putting up uh, it's keeping our spirits high during the lockdown i always keep an eye out on the various social media handles um, all please catch up on your uh, youtube videos and uh, this is quite an exceptionally engaging content that you all are putting up so thank you and congratulations for that okay 
So uh, now that I've been asked to conduct a workshop on how to watch a film, I will of course begin with a disclaimer that unless you consider watching Andaz Apna Apna on repeat for about 20 years of my life, um, that as an expertise, I am not an expert at all. I do know a little bit about film theory and uh, I do love watching movies, but that is all. Uh, now that I've suitably warned you, uh, I should possibly also let you know that as somebody who teaches literature, my job is to read, analyze and critique. Uh, reading a text and reading a film are not very different, you know. Both a text and a film, both, you know, they they uh, should be read as consciously as you, you should be reading a film as consciously as you read a book or a poem. Uh, reading presupposes language, the presence of language. So you read uh, something that is has been communicated to you in language. So there is a presupposition of a language and it is mostly a subjective experience. Um, so can I really teach you how to watch a movie? Maybe not. My way of reading or watching a movie is possibly not going to match your way of reading the movie and it need not be the same you know it is subjective it is personal and it is guided by something we know as uh, or we call as perspective so with that i'll get on to my first slide i hope that is visible okay i hope the slide is visible to everybody um, so if you look at this first slide, which is a collage of two stills from the Oscar winning Korean movie Parasite, directed by Bon Joon Ho, uh, this uh, came out, I think, in 2019. So whatever stills or clips I show you um, during this session are uh, movies which I personally highly recommend. So Parasite is one movie I do highly recommend. So we were talking about perspective. Now look at the two different stills. The woman here in the first still, she says that the sky is so blue and thanks to the rain. So for this woman, the rain provides a kind of relief there's a sense of relief associated with rainfall however for the man here who's driving her car and who belongs to this uh, rain drenched room here who stays there for him it has been a debilitating event it has been something that has severely uh, impeded his chances of survival this woman is speaking from a position of privilege. The man is talking from a position of disadvantage, a great disadvantage. So the language of film depends also on um, a perspective, both for the audience, for one who is watching the movie, and also for the director. So there is a certain mode of storytelling. What is the director trying to tell you? And he's trying to tell you things through uh, the language, through the language of the film. Another uh, thing that I would like to talk about uh, is the second uh, slide. I'll just go on to the second slide. Okay. So this is the second slide. Uh, this, as you see, the question I told you of watching a film or the language of a film, which depends on perspective, both for the audience and for the director. Uh, this is where Akira Kurosawa's movie, Rashomon, which was made in 1950, that comes in. This movie gave a completely different dimension to storytelling. Why? I'll tell you. So this film's narrative, it revolves around the murder of a samurai. And the story of the murder or uh, the film is based upon four different accounts from four different characters of the same event of murder. So it is the murder of the samurai that four people uh, report and they have four different versions. So the film opens with torrential rainfall and the murder of the, uh, and there are these three men. Uh, there is a common man, there's a woodcutter and there's a priest, I think. So all three of them are sitting there and they are discussing the murder of the samurai. 
and they all have very different uh, versions of it as the story advances as the film advances you realize perhaps that the man was murdered the samurai was murdered because uh, he has uh, possibly you know uh, he was uh, uh, possibly attacked by a bandit and he was the bandit was also responsible for raping the samurai's wife so these i say are possible interpretations because the film does not give us any conclusive uh, proof of the fact or the film does not come to a resolution of who has murdered the samurai we don't know now this film gave rise to something called the rashomon effect and if you go on to study um in the department of film studies anywhere in the world you are bound to study this movie and you are bound to study the rashomon effect rashomon effect then becomes a term that is used for a storytelling technique uh, it describes a single narrative arc told several times from different perspectives so what uh, rashomon tells us is that you know it is possible to have multiple perspectives films will have language films can be read and films can be read in multiple ways so that is our take away from the first two slides that films have a language they can be read and they can be read in multiple ways they can be multiple perspectives and of course as i told you at the beginning there is no right left center or wrong way of reading a movie or watching a movie okay uh, all interpretations are welcome let us go on to the next slide okay so what we have here are quotations from a uh, collection of essays by shotujit rai it's called uh, the name of the book i think is shotujit rai on cinema and the name of the particular essay is on the filmmaker's craft so if you can see what shotujit rai um, take a moment to read what he is saying about uh, the art of film making you see that he talks about the language of film one that the sources of film language or cinematic language is available all around us it's there all around you it's everywhere and he also says that cinematic language has its own grammar it has its own punctuation it has its own syntax i think it's a very beautiful way of uh, putting uh, how one should read or how one should see watch a movie so uh, what is this grammar punctuation and syntax that he talks about let's try to decode that okay right so the grammar syntax punctuation of cinema i have tried to you know this is by no means exhaustive i have just tried to do it in a very brief manner so that you know you just have an idea of uh, what you are expected to do when you are asked to review a film or when you are asked to you know watch a movie and give your interpretation of a movie so these are the things that we must keep in mind when we are watching a movie or after you've watched the movie you must sit down and think about these things so what are what is all of this let's look at the first one so we have plot here uh what is plot now plot is basically to put it very very simply plot is the story plot is what happens in the movie so what is the movie about so the first question that you ask yourself after you have watched a movie is what this film is particularly about what is the film about did it uh, present what it was presenting in a very believable manner was it realistic was it believable or was it very melodramatic it was not believable you had to you know it it was quite uh, odd you didn't believe in what was happening did it make you think how was the climax revealed how did the setting affect the story so these are the things that or these are the questions that you must keep in mind about a film's plot or these are the questions that you are supposed to ask yourself when you think about a film's plot then we have the themes and the tone 
so um there are in some movies you know hidden symbols repetitive uh, hidden symbols so they appear in a movie and uh, they try to present a central idea or a central theme so did you when you watch a movie you have to think about what is the central idea of this movie what was the central idea what was the film trying to tell me did it entertain did it educate or did it try to make me aware of something um there might be hidden uh, symbols there might be images which are repetitive so you have to find your own meaning from those images and those symbols for example mm, of of my mind i can now only think of tamasha uh intyaz ali's film and um in tamasha you would have seen that if you have watched tamasha there is this uh, three way mirror that appears and reappears in the movie you know if you just look at it and ranveer is looking the protagonist of the film he is looking at that three way mirror and it is repetitive it comes uh, it comes at multiple places in the movie uh, why do we have this so you know it kind of i think in my reading it suggests the multiple personalities of the protagonist and uh, if you've seen the movie you would understand how relevant that is so when you understand that you understand what the director is trying to tell you that we are living with these uh, multiple personalities and we try to make peace with the two personalities or you know there is an dominant personality that we present to the world and the other personalities are hidden we don't like to present that so that becomes clearer if you think of the symbol in that way a very easy or a very um, you know oft uh, repeated often repeated symbol are overcast skies overcast skies rainfall suggestive of turmoil in the um, lives of the characters this you would remember possibly in kapoor and sons it it comes in many hindi movies in kapoor okay uh, was there a question or anything do i continue sir you can continue okay so um you would possibly remember kapoor and sons where um, towards the end of the movie when they are trying to take a family photo and uh, the movie has reached a kind of a climax where uh, the characters the the husband and the wife they are completely at loggerheads you know they are fighting it out and uh, the family suffers a kind of a split as a result of this uh, this event the the fight that the husband and the wife have and that the two brothers have so you have this scene uh, which is uh, they are together they are trying to take a photo but then there is this overcast skies and sudden rainfall and then the husband dies so these are all things which uh, appear and reappear in movies so the theme the tone uh, that is set through symbols through uh, uh, associations through setting okay then uh, of course you have i'm not doing that i won't be doing that in this workshop uh, christopher nolan's movies if you are a fan of christopher nolan's movies i am quite a fan of his movies but i'm not going to discuss the symbolism in his movies because it's going to take us ages to discuss that but if you are um, a fan of his movies you know that how uh, there are certain images and certain symbols that keep uh, coming in nolan's movies okay next we have the acting and characters so the third thing that we must keep in mind while we watch a movie is um how are the characters being portrayed is the portrayal realistic did the acting you know help us in understanding the character was the character revelation done in a proper manner so if you have a certain character in a certain social setting is the character behaving in a manner which befits that social setting so uh, are these characters believable characters are these characters larger than life characters um do we have flat characters and round characters what are flat characters and round characters now flat characters are simple characters uh, you know stereotypes that do not undergo a lot of change in the course of the movie so uh, stereotypical flat characters would be the coy heroine 
uh, NACA heroine or uh, the very brave hero who is fighting with the villain who is uh, a very, very, you know, good, the epitome of goodness. So these are all stereotypical flat characters or do we have rounded characters? Rounded characters in the sense that these characters show a trajectory you know they uh, they change during the course of the movie so they might begin you might begin the movie by thinking that ki bhalo lok kintu jokhon shesh hobe till the time you come to the end of the movie your idea about the character would have changed completely so that is a round character um, so what kind of characters do we have here what kind of characters do we have so this is something that we have to think about um then direction uh direction is very important so uh, what are the questions that you should be asking yourself pertaining to direction did you like the story that was told uh, did you like the manner in which the story was told was the pace of the film slow was it fast how similar or dissimilar is this movie in comparison to the other works of the director um let's say for example if you think of um somebody like imtiaz ali or if you think of somebody like sanjay leela bansali so uh, and i would here like to give the example of the movie black if you look at black if you are trying to review black black is very different from the rest of bansali's oeuvre in the rest of the work that he has done so keep in mind um, ram leela or even um, devdas or uh, what is the last movie that he did padmavati so all these movies they have very you know larger than life characters opulent sets magnificent costumes and here we have black which is aesthetically very very pleasing uh, but you don't have that magnificence and that opulence it was a very different film keeping in mind bansali's oeuvre so that is a point to remember when you are analyzing black so how do you position that film in the entire uh, career of that director right so uh, that then we have i think music so music is a very very important part of indian films um when we are uh, talking about uh, hollywood movies or maybe european movies japanese korean movies um you have to keep in mind the background score you don't have song and dance sequences so much so does the background score music it supports the mood and the tone of the film this is a question that we have to ask does it fit in well with the movie or was it simply an unnecessary distraction so that is something we need to think about when we watch a movie um uh, about the music about the music part of the background score part next up we have editing and dialogue so editing is a very important part of a movie uh, of a film if you are somebody who likes taking videos you know how important editing is you know how important transitions are because in today's world of reels we all know uh, the importance of transitions and we all know the importance of ed- importance of editing so uh, editing is very very important our uh, it it kind of you know uh, sh- uh, it gives pace to the movie so slow paced or fast paced was the editing flow consistent for example if you're watching a film did at any point the film appear to be very jarring or disturbing smoothly flow kore jacche actor por ekta scene na ki kono rokom er disturbance hocche jarring some kind of an effect which is unsettling you that happens because of the editing uh, how are the transitions used between shots transitions ki bhabe kora hoy um how do we see the transitions happening i'm going to talk in a bit about the transitions and the kind of transitions that happen in editing but how were the transitions handled in the movie that is something we have to keep in mind then dialogues um dialogues of course delivered by the characters so will the dialogue or are the dialogues matching the characters were the con- conversations uh, befitting the character so if this is a 
you know a person who has never been to school has never been to a university and that person is quoting shakespeare is that quite believable so you have to think of these things when you are uh, watching a movie finally i come to cinematography cinematography uh, deals with what we also call the mise en scene mise en scene is uh, spelled as m i s e e n s c e n e mise en scene is a french word which means placing on stage mise en scene actually implies everything that is placed in front of you uh, that is placed in front of the camera so cinematography is concerned with the mise en scene so what is mise en scene or what is cinematography cinematography is concerned with the shots what kind of shots camera shots were used what were the camera angles that were used what kind of sound and light effect was used how did it affect the storytelling how well did the camera move how were the frames composed so uh, if you have uh, watched uh, i think i have that next on my slide so i'll quickly go on to that and let you decide so um, how are frames composed how is the editing done what is the pace what uh, are the angles the camera angles and what are the different shots that the director has used so this is all part of cinematography that is part of our mise en scene or um, also you know uh, what we are seeing on uh, on the uh, on screen i think i possibly missed production design uh, yeah i missed production design production design is uh, it it relates to the sets uh, how were the sets arranged the costumes all of that so sanjay leela bansali's movies very very ornate elaborate sets beautiful the grandeur karan johar's movies similarly uh, if you watch um, at this point i will do a movie recommendation uh, if you watch if you are interested in regional movies um if you have watched or or uh, not very far away if you watch ritu parno's movies the way the sets were arranged the detailing that was done from the cups to the bed covers to the you know pillow covers how were they arranged you know uh, that is that very attention to detail what does that tell you about the uh, director what does that tell you about the characters so uh, that is your production that is part of production design the sets how uh, everything has been arranged how what you're seeing and uh, the costumes what are the costumes that uh, they were wearing what kind of costumes they were wearing where where the costumes were fitting the characters so that um, the movie recommendation that i was going to do is um, a malayalam movie um, i think it is there on amazon prime uh, it's called the great indian kitchen now the great indian kitchen is a very very slow paced movie so if you're fond of thrillers this movie is maybe it's not for you but i am recommending this because you can see the sheer joy of or or the sheer brilliance of filmmaking here also see you soon see you soon is another movie malayalam movie which i would recommend again for the very very uh, inventive use of the camera the way the camera has been used see you soon released during the lockdown and because they could not you know go out and uh, do it in a set in a production uh, setting so what they do is they work through screens they used they used mobile phones they've used uh, laptops they have used screens the entire story is happening through video calls and calls on skype it's happening through facetime so it's a brilliant use of camera and a brilliant use of resources how you use whatever resources you have how you use that how you you know kind of optimize those uses so and that is uh, seen in see you soon so see you soon and uh, the great indian kitchen are two films that i recommend now i will go on to this uh, clip i hope you can the the sound is possibly not very loud but this is an audio clip from uh, charulata uh 
try and read or try and see what the camera is trying to show us. What is the camera trying to show us? This is something which we should be able to at least try. Shadurupadi, I did not mean the subtitles to be in French. They just happened. The video is from YouTube. So I just passed the French test. These are, of course, two different scenes from two different parts uh, of the movie. They are not together. This movie is, of course, highly recommended if you have not watched it already. Please notice the specific part and her reaction, Madhavi's reaction. So that's the clip. Now, I, of course, have a few questions. I always have questions. My students know that I keep asking questions and uh, I keep prodding them for answering me. So uh, the specific part that I drew your attention to, um, the protagonist, the heroine, looking through this and uh, seeing a mother and a child uh, how what what do we read there what do we watch there what do we see there nowhere does Shotaritra mention or uh, nowhere sorry I, I shouldn't say Shotaritra nowhere does the character of this woman say that you know this is this is her reality this is her life this is the emptiness when you begin with the uh, the first the title montage the first scene that we have that we saw basically that she is trying to look at the outside world and her connection to the outside world is is uh, not even uh, not with her physical presence you know she's not allowed uh, in the outside world because the time that we are looking at 
there was a clear demarcation between the ondur mohol and the outside the home and the world to mera to bhetor hi thak to me der baire jawa allowed chilo na to her connection to the outside world is through this this uh, thing that she's the, the pair of binoculars that she has in her hand so that is uh, her connection to the outside world and that is how she interacts with the outside world and that is uh, the the emptiness that you see and you know she's trying to follow these people she's following these people her gaze is following these people and through that camera the way the camera moves the way you follow her you follow charu lata you follow charu in her daily routine that's a routine that's a life uh, being there the emptiness the solitude and then she uh, then she suddenly looks at this mother and the child so of course that's quite evident it might you would say suggest that she is yearning for that kind of an intimacy or that kind of a relationship uh, motherhood she's just looking at that but the character does not tell you that but you see and you understand so that is the beauty of a moving image that's the beauty of films okay mm, there are other things also which i did not discuss but that's for you to find out okay now my next slide um, and from this slide onwards i'm going to talk about uh, the specific camera techniques that uh, makes uh, the film now the first thing that we need to talk about is the shot a film is made up of different shots and uh, a shot is of course a single uninterrupted piece of film so uh, what do we see here in this shot what do we see here this is of course a still from shotrit rai's movie nayak uh, what we are seeing here are two people the hero uttam kumar and we see the female protagonist shormila thakur dujone mukhamukhi boshe achen majkhane onek gulo lok there is something that the scene is trying to uh, tell us of course there is not one single thing that the scene is trying to tell us it's trying to tell us a number of things that is how storytelling happens that is how that is why this shot is important that is why where if you've seen nayo the place where this um, shot appears in the movie and the way it has been framed the way it, remember i was talking about composition i was talking about framing so the way the shots have been framed it's very important it's very important there is a distance between these two people there is a distance uh, and also there is a difference in their worlds they belong to very different worlds this person on um, uh, uttam kumar the character that has been portrayed by uttam kumar he once belonged to this crowd now there is a great distance between him and the crowd so you see him in focus and the crowd is out of focus the crowd is not in focus so the director is trying to show you through this distance how far he has come he is the nayak now okay so that is a shot what are the different kinds of shot that we have in movies the first uh, very very um, you know common uh, shot that we have in movies is the long shot or the establishing shot now i'm only going to uh, show you stills i'm not going to show you the clips because it would make the entire thing very very long so this shot is uh, something we all recognize it's world famous it's very celebrated what is the function of the establishing shot or the long shot in the long shot you know you have the characters with the scenery the setting so you are trying to establish the character you are trying to establish the character uh, in reference to or in terms of the setting you are trying to set the characters there in the setting establishing the characters there so the characters or the objects they would appear to be very small uh, they would be seen from some distance so it's a long shot and uh, these uh, shots also establish the relationship between the character and the setting now if you look at this particular particular shot from pothir pachali the train 
the train again uh, comes in from the outside world durga and opu have very impoverished uh, uh, you know they they have a very uh, impoverished uh, kind of setting they they come from a very poor family kori bora to doure train dekhte jacche train ta oder kache ekta khub notun jinish khub ekta adbhut jinish দৌড়ে ট্রেন দেখতে যাচ্ছে দুজনে অ্যান্ড দেয়ার ইজ অগেন আ কন্ট্রাস্ট বিটুইন দেয়ার প্রেজেন্ট সিচুয়েশন অ্যান্ড পার হ্যাপস দ্য লাইফ আউটসাইড দ্যাট প্রেজেন্ট সিচুয়েশন সো দিস ইজ সামথিং দ্যাট ইজ ডান বাই দি এস্টাবলিশিং শর্টস ইউ ফেমাস establishing shots would be if i had to look at uh, hindi movies the one establishing shot that immediately comes to my mind is any shot that introduces the hero or the heroine so you begin by showing a complete scenery that there, there is a scenery and then you have it panning from the foot to things around the uh hero or the heroine and then suddenly the hero and the heroine comes in focus uh think of ddlj dilwale dulhaniya le jayenge how kajol or shahrukh khan are introduced so those are long shots establishing shots next we have uh, a close shot a close up uh this is of course from teen konna shamapti uh, a close shot or a close up as the name suggest suggests it takes up 80% of the frame and it appears to be very large this attracts the attention to the subject or the object that is in focus so in the first still you have a letter in the second still we have the female protagonist now in both cases what happens is there is uh, the attention is solely on the object and on this woman it shows uh, there is a direct engagement with this kind of a shot the audience directly engages amra bujhte pari character er dike takiye heroine er dike ekhane jemon oponashin er dike takiye bojha jacche oponashin er character oponashin ki rokom how is she what is her role in this movie seta kintu ei scene ta ei shot ta dekhle bojha jacche similarly this letter tumi fire esho iti pagli it comes at a very very important uh, significant portion in the film um i hope all of you have watched teen konna please tell me all of you have watched teen konna if not you are going to watch this the first movie that you are going to watch this is this watch after this is this movie so um this also establishes a change in the narrative this one close up shot of the letter so uh, these uh, close up shots basically you know uh, draw our attention and engage our attention with the subject or the object the third type of shot that we have is a medium shot now as the name suggests in a medium shot the subject is framed from knees up like you see it here in this shot this is between a full shot and a close shot so this is a still from ghore baire and uh, shondeep nikhilesh and bimola nikhil shondeep bimola and the, the three of them and the dynamics between the three of them that's very very clear okay so that's a medium shot now we are going to discuss the focus i was talking about the focus a uh, few minutes back uh, the focus if you are somebody who likes taking photos we all like taking photos now because we are all armed with smartphones so a uh, focus is trying to find the sharpness of an object so you say that your photo has good focus if it is a sharp crisp image a sharp image is said to be in focus while an image that is not quite sharp is blurry is said to be out of focus now we also like to create the kind of blurring effect by using portrait mode these days um the director can use the camera focus to communicate something very very important to his audience in visual storytelling as i tell you in this uh, power point it, it the focus directly impacts how the audience may perceive the subject matter so if you are able to handle you know understand focus well you are able to tell your story well 
So there are three kinds of focus, majorly three kinds of focus. One, the soft focus, the rack focus, and the deep focus. Let's see what they are. So this is the deep focus. This is a still from Orson Welles' movie, Citizen Kane. 1941. So deep focus, you know, in deep focus, the audience sees the characters, the audience sees the settings, the audience would see the lighting, decoration, everything. You are engaging at various levels here in the deep focus. So there is a lot of light, the background is lit, the mid ground, foreground, background, all of that is visible in deep focus. So you are engaged at the level of the storytelling but also in whatever is happening at the level of production design lighting and set set decoration this still particularly um, it kind of has a three-dimensional effect you know it shows citizen kane this person here background uh, citizen kane's dinner party this is his dinner party it shows the kind of grandeur you know it shows the kind of uh, largest that this dinner party uh, depicts is his uh, the, his personality, the, the kind of grandeur of his personality. And also, you would see that he's towering above the other characters. He seems to be towering above the other characters. So that also suggests his social position, his uh, grand teacher. So this was something that uh, Orson Welles used to use a lot. Deep focus used to be used. Uh, deep focus was used a lot. Um, in the late 30s and 40s, it was quite a thing at that time. Then we have shallow focus. Uh, this is a still from The Handmaid's Tale, which is not a movie, by the way. It's a series. Now, in shallow focus, only one plane of frame will be visible. Usually the foreground here. You can see that Offred and her friend of Glenn, perhaps, they are visible. The rest of the scenery is blurred. This also has a certain uh, purpose. This is mostly used for close-up shots. Mostly used for close-up shot. It uh, depicts a kind of subjectivity. It wants to draw your attention towards the character and not the scenery. Right, so that is shallow focus. Then we have rack focus. This is also a series. Uh, no, sorry, this is a movie. This is not a series. This is a movie, Marriage Story. Um, here you see the divorce proceedings. This is a couple who are getting divorced. So this man, Charlie, and this woman, Nicole, they are getting divorced. This is a story about their marriage, and they are getting divorced. And this is the courtroom scene. So what happens in rack focus is that two parallel scenes are shown. So a character who has been the center of the focus in the first scene is out of focus in the second scene. So you see in this stills that in the first still you have Charlie who is in focus and in the second still we have Nicole who is in focus. So this also shows, you know, both of them are at the end of the table. It shows the distance between the two of them. It shows how they have fallen apart because they are going through a divorce. Their relationship is coming to an end. So uh, their positioning, you know, it shows the distance between them. And when one is in focus, the other goes out of focus. So this way, rack focus is used to show the relationship between the two subjects, in this case, Nicole and Charlie. Um, then we have camera angles. Now, framing camera angles are very important. Uh, how is the frame shot? Has it been shot from a high angle? Has it been shot from a low angle? Has it been shot from the eye level angle? Or have has the director used a tilted angle? So these are the different camera angles. Let me give you examples. Camera angles also give you a lot of uh, information about the subject. 
what the director is trying to tell you about the subject. So let's see. This is the low angle shot. You see two stills, one from Inglorious Bastards by Tarantino, and the other one is uh, Avengers, of course. So a low angle shot is when the camera is positioned low on the vertical axis, below the level of the eye line. And you are looking up at an object, right? So what effect it creates is that the object who is being looked up at appears to be very dominating, very powerful, very strong. So in this scene from Inglorious Bastards, Brad Pitt and Ellie Roth, they are kneeling over an unseen Nazi soldier and they have carved a swastika on the uh, forehead of the soldier. So these two characters are the heroes of the film. And Tarantino frames them in a very domineering, uh, subjugating kind of manner, in a very heroic way. You know, it kind of shows to the audience that they are dominating. They are the heroes. They are hero material. So a low angle shot is mostly used in superhero movies. You know, it is also called the hero shot. So this in the Avengers still, you have a medium low angle shot of the entire cast. Okay, so low angle shots are also hero shots. Um, if I can think of the Hindi movies again, any kind of shot, you know, in the action movies, if, if you look at, uh, they're really not good movies and I don't recommend them at all. But for understanding low angle shots, Rohit Shetty's movies. Uh, the way the camera is held from the down, so you look at the, you know, and, and then how it goes up. So you have that very imposing kind of a stature, very imposing kind of a effect that the director wants to give because this is the hero that is being introduced. So that is the low angle shot. Then we have the high angle shot. Um, in a high angle shot, as the name suggests, the camera is placed above the subject. So you are filming the subject from the top, from a height. What it does is the subject in question appears uh, powerless, vulnerable. Uh, this also, you know, uh, the high angle also would uh, uh, present to you or would uh, kind of communicate to you a sense of distress, a uh, sense of disturbance, psychological disturbance, a sense of uh, danger or shock. This is uh, still from the Lord of the Rings, I think, yeah. So this is the high angle shot. Next, we have the Dutch angle shot or the tilt angle shot. This is Christopher Nolan's uh, trademark shot. He does this a lot and a lot. You'll find this shot in most of Nolan's movies. So the, uh, it's a very stylistic way of shooting, you know. Mm, you have to tilt your camera at one level and this creates a very dramatic effect. It unsettles you, it disturbs you because this is not happening at your eye level. Your camera is tilted like this and you can't watch it. You're watching it like this, but you should be watching it like this. So it disturbs the audience. It creates a sense of suspense. It creates a sense of thrill, um, a kind of uh, psychological distress. The audience feels disoriented because, you know, you don't know how you should be watching this movie this way, this way, what way should we, we be watching this? So that is the Dutch angle or the tilt angle shot. This is from Inception. This is happening in the dream. This is the dream. Okay, most of the uh, most of the shots are happening in the dream. This is the eye level shot. It's the simplest, perhaps, and it has no hidden meaning to it, except perhaps that the eye level shot directly interacts with the audience. The audience is taken into the shot. It, uh, the audience uh, relates to the characters. The audience feels itself um, engaging with the characters. So the eye level shot is this so you have like an eye level close-up so this is from harry potter and the sorcerer's stone it's a very neutral kind of a shot um except that you are uh, in focus the characters are all in focus and you feel that you are in the scene with the characters you relate to the characters very easily when this kind of shot happens Okay, so after the angles, I come to the techniques of uh, 
a film, editing techniques. Montage is something that I have been talking about a lot. I've been uh, saying this a lot. Montage is again a French word which means assembly or editing. And montage is nothing but a collection or an accumulation of very disparate scenes or disparate images or stills that are brought together to form a sequence. So you might have very disparate scenes from uh, very, very different parts of a person's life and they are brought together to kind of give a unity, a kind of chronology to the life or to, to that film. So it condenses time, it saves time, it can, you know, condense months, weeks, years into a single frame. So that is montage for you. So I have a clip here, which is a two minutes, I think it's under three minutes, but it shows the entire lifetime of this couple from their marriage to the time they grow old. So this is montage. You see how their life progresses and how that is uh, reflected. You have different uh, scenes, different, uh, uh, they get married, the woman gets pregnant, they have a baby, this time they're going to have a baby. Uh, then the child grows older, the parents grow older. I'm going to quickly, you know, yeah. So this is their uh, troubles, their distresses, their uh, distressed life, whatever happens, the troubles that they face, their savings gone, but they are together, they stay together. Again, the repetitive nature of this, the, how it happens every day and throughout their life, and now they have grown old together. Yeah, so that was a montage for you. Um, then we have different kinds of editing. Uh, the jump cut, the jump cut was immortalized by Godard. Uh, G-O-D-A-R-D. He was a French filmmaker who belonged to the French new wave uh, kind of cinema. The cinematic movement that he belonged to was the French new wave. Uh, you don't need to know all of that right now. But a jump cut, what is a jump cut? So you have a transition which is a very abrupt transition. So when I was discussing the editing, the kinds of editing that would you would have to keep an eye out for. So I told you that you have to notice whether the editing was seamless or uh, you felt that it was unsettling you or it was disturbing you. So if it was disturbing you or it was unsettling you, then of course the editing has been jarring uh, and it has been done deliberately. So let's see this. This is from Goda's movie, Breathless. The dialogues are in French. You don't have to concentrate on the dialogues. Just see how the editing is done. So you just saw that. It suddenly changed, you know, the... Sorry. 
Okay, so what is basically happening is, let me stop here. What's basically happening is, you see her suddenly with the mirror in her hand, she's looking at herself in the mirror, then she does not put the mirror away, you know, she doesn't put it back into her bag or her purse, we don't see that happening, and suddenly the mirror is not in her hands. These are things that, you know, they, these seem, they, there is a lack of continuity, you would expect that, where did it go? We don't see where it went. It was suddenly not there. So the continuity is disrupted. That is deliberately done. Amunnoyje Oda Jantin na editing kake bole. He of course knew what editing is. But this is an innovation that he brought. This is a kind of a transition where there are these jumps, discontinuities. Okay, so that's the jump cut for you. Uh, then we have the L cut and the J cut. These are very technical terms, but um, I'll just tell you that in the L cut and the J cut, which are just the opposites of one another, in the L cut, the editing changeover happens between one shot and the other. So there are two shots which are there side by side, and we have a change from one shot to the other. The visual and the audio, they shift at different times. So for example, in the L cut, this is a scene from the fight club. So in this scene, um, if you are able to see this, if I can play this, uh, in L cut, the audio remains from the previous shot, but the visual has gone to the next shot. So you watch the next shot, but you're hearing the audio from the last shot. In the J cut, just the opposite happens. You see the audio, you hear the audio before you see the video. Okay, so this is the L cut and the J cut. This has very bad sound quality, so I don't. Yeah, so they started talking, but uh, sorry, the scene began, but the audio was from the previous scene. The visual was different. The transitions, we saw the transitions. We are going from one one shot to another, but the sound and the visuals they don't match. Okay. Next we have the cross cut. Cross cut is called parallel editing. You have two different scenes from two different uh, time zones, two different uh, characters, but they are kind of juxtaposed together. They're happening together. This happens when the uh, director is possibly trying to tell you two simultaneous stories. Two storylines are happening at the same time. And they are put together to kind of show a similarity or a certain similarity in theme, certain some kind of similarity which the uh, director wants to convey or communicate to you. Again, this has been used mostly by Christopher Nolan. Inception, the various levels of the dream state, uh, the entire film looks like it's been done only on cross cut and tilted angles, but this is an example of cross cut or parallel editing. You will see how in this scene, two very different scenes are juxtaposed together. You see what's happening? Two very different scenes, two very different scenarios. They are being put together.
that's a cross cut or a parallel cut. Let me go into this. We've come to towards the end. So just the transitions are left to talk about. Now transitions is something that I'm not going to talk about a lot because uh, I think the students know transitions better than I do. But uh, the transitions that are most commonly used in films are the dissolve, the wipe, the cutaway, the fade, and the match cut. The match cut is something that I would like to talk about. It's uh, a standard cut from one shot to other, but it matches the similar action of both the shots. You have to see an example of this to understand what a match cut is. Dissolve, wipe, cutaway, fade are all transitions that are very easily available on any of the video editing apps that you find on uh, Android or iPhone, you know, in the Apple Store or on the on, on Play Store. So if you look at InShot or KineMaster, I think most of these video editing apps have dissolved, wipe, cut away, fade. These are very common uh, transitions. They are, in fact, also available on Microsoft PowerPoint. But what the match cut is, uh, I will show you from a scene um, in Psycho, which is a film by Hitchcock. So this is the scene. I am not going to play the entire scene, but I'm just going to come to the uh, point where the match cut happens. Now, this is a scene where this woman is going to be attacked. She's taking a shower and she will be attacked and she'll be killed. So I will quickly just go on to the part where she has been attacked. And now she is uh, lying on the floor of the washroom. So this is it. The blood flows. This is the match cut. This is what we know or call a match cut. Okay, so uh, from that rounded little outlet for the water, you go to the iris, the pupils. So that's the match cut. That is a transition. It's a transition that has just happened. It's an editing technique. Okay. Sound, the uh, different ways or the different kinds of sound that we find in a film. Sounds can be diegetic and non-diegetic. Diegetic sound is any sound that can be heard by the character in the movie. Or, uh, for example, if the character is typing or texting on a phone, and if the keyboard sounds are on, then those sounds are heard. So those are diegetic sounds. Or if you're walking on a pebbled path, the sound that it makes, that is a diegetic sound. A non-diegetic sound is any sound that cannot be logically heard by the character within the movie environment. That is possibly only heard by the audience. So all kinds of background scores, uh, song and dance sequences in Bollywood, uh, theme, voiceovers, theme music, voiceovers. So here I have the example of uh, Amitabh Bachchan's voiceover in Lagan. Also Pluto the Dog's voiceover in Dil Dhadakne Do, which was done by Amir Khan. So those are non-diegetic sounds. And to explain that, I have a video here. This is a one minute movie called Lockdown. A short film, it's called Lockdown. So you will see how the different sounds are used here.
So you have a good mix of both diegetic and non-diegetic sounds in this clip, right? And lastly, we have lighting. So there are different kinds of lighting in a film when you're watching a film. Uh, generally, there's high key lighting and low key lighting that tells you about the characters or the scenery. Then there is side or bottom lighting and there is side lighting. So these are examples. That's low key lighting from the Joker. That's Harry Potter and the Deadly Hall Deathly Hallows is high key lighting. And this is a still from the movie Heard where you have a side soft light. Lighting. So different kinds of lighting are used for different purposes. It shows a certain characteristic of that um, uh, of subject which is being portrayed by the director. So that's for lighting. Okay, so I think I'm done. Uh, the major cinematic movements that we have in world history, uh, these are the major cinematic movements. I don't say that they are, uh, you know, in a comprehensive list. It is not a comprehensive list, of course, but if somebody is interested in looking up or studying film or theory, film studies, uh, if you want to read more about it, then there is German Expressionism, there is Soviet Montage, there is Italian Neorealism and the French Wave. Italian Neorealism, uh, basically, you know, they, it, it told stories of common people, of common life, more realistic. Expressionism had greater uh, visual distortions than hor horrific scenes. Then uh, the French New Waves created a completely different concept of the uh, author in cinema, A-U-T-E-U-R, or author in cinema. There, you know, till then, till the French New Wave, uh, it was believed that the production houses had the last say in the kind of movies that were to be made. Uh, Truffaut and Godard, you saw the still from uh, Breathless. They created this kind of a very different way of filmmaking where the director would have the last word. So their way of filmmaking is very, very different, very stylistic too. So those are the different isms and the different films uh, you could look out for. Uh, these are the posters of this film, uh, of these films. So Bicycle Thief is Italian Neuralism, Katsusonku, or uh, The 400 Blows is uh, French Nouvelle Vague or New Wave, uh, Battleship Potemkin is Soviet Montage, and Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is German Expressionism. So different kinds of films. Film theory is based on uh, usually how a film is constructed, what is being represented, is it realistic or not, the way it is being said or the, the visuals, uh, who does it visually appeal to. So that, these are the theorists. Uh, I will not talk about them, don't worry. The books that are recommended are of course uh, Dudley Andrews and uh, Robert Stamps of Film Theory. So that is that, I think, and for to end it up, uh, the Indian movies, I did a very broad classification in terms of silent movies, popular drama, popular romantic films, and the new wave films, and iconic films. And then I had some clips, which if there is time, I would just like to show one clip and be done with this. That's the popular romantic. the stereotype of the airport scene. You see that in most romantic movies. Okay, all of you have seen this, so I'll get on to the next clip that I had for you. So this is parallel new wave. The 
the music. But we will, we will end with a message of hope. That's where I would end today. Tumra mone rekho, patshala ek din khulbe. Right? So that is it for today. I think I will stop sharing now. I think I've spoken quite a lot. Okay. How do I stop sharing? Okay. That's it.
Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I wish I could say let's have a big, big round of applause because this was totally worth it. This workshop was like so good. I enjoyed it thoroughly, and I think everyone here would totally agree to it. Um, a big, big thank you to you, ma'am. And I'd like. Uh, okay. Can and I, I definitely ask look for. Can I yeah, ask sure. something? Yeah. I raised my hand. Maybe uh, I saw. I saw. Yes. yes, yes, I saw. Um, a, a, a very um, interesting, illuminating session. Apart from the fact that I the most of the video clips, I just couldn't hear a thing. Uh, I don't know. It was the network problem or what. Um, so I just wanted to ask about a, uh, whatever you call it, a camera technique or a shot or what. Uh, especially I'll refer to Bhutura cinemas, ghost scenes, we appear to be behind the camera and it uh, runs into empty rooms, vacuous rooms, moving here and there. And we are the anticipation, uh, we have the anticipation of meeting someone or seeing someone. Hmm, uh, what kind of technique is that? If you can tell us something. That is, um, that is scaring uh, the audience technique, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think whether there's a name to it, Shudeshna De, I don't really know the exact technical term for it. But uh, it is a technique where the camera is deliberately, you know, uh, moving. You use a kind yeah. of a handheld camera movement. film sense of urgency sense of thrill ba suspense ta create kora jay jeta tumi bolle ne otar kono specific naam ache kina seta to amake khuje dekhte hobe ami ei muhurte i can't remember okay no, i'm not interested in name anyway mane amar otao ekta amar mone hocche ota ekta technique ha mane prottekta genre r dhoro ekta kore technique thake seta dhore dhore bolte gele dhoro horror movies er ekta kore technique jemon ami bollam je superhero movies e ei low angle shot ta khub beshi use kora hoy so, this is a cinema, but it has director-specific techniques. So, certain directors have certain techniques that they uh, use quite a lot. So, there techniques that they use quite a lot. So, there are many techniques that they use quite a Medium shot ta na, usually to me uh, more than one characters tokhon mane dhoro oi khane jemon ami dekhalam je tin jon ke ekshathe dekhanor chesta kora hocche ebong you want to show a kind of a dynamic between the characters you know you want to show a kind of a equation that exists between those characters tokhon acha ar medium shots tomar emnite scenery er sathe character ke niyo kora hoy jokhon dhoro keu dhoro kaj korche বা ধরো আমি ল্যাপটপে বসে কিছু একটা টাইপ করছি তো সেইটা যখন নেওয়া হচ্ছে মানে ইট ইজ অলসো আ কাইন্ড অফ এন এস্টাবলিশিং শট ইউ আর আইদার এস্টাবলিশিং আ কাইন্ড অফ ইকুয়েশন বিটুইন দ্য डिफरेंट ক্যারেক্টারস অর ইউ আর এস্টাবলিশিং দ্য ক্যারেক্টার ইন আ সেটিং ডুইং আ কাইন্ড অফ অ্যাক্টিভিটি মানে কিছু একটা করছে মানে ক্যারেক্টারটাকে এস্টাবলিশ করছি না বা ক্যারেক্টারটা কিছু একটা করছে সেটাকে আমি দেখানোর চেষ্টা করছি मोस्टলি তখন মিডিয়াম শটস গুলো ইউজ করি মানে Perspective 
এবং তুমি দেখো যদি সিনটার একটা ডেপথ আছে সেই জন্য ডিপ ফোকাস বলছে যেহেতু সিনটার একটা ডেপথ রয়েছে সিনারি মানে চারপাশে যা রয়েছে ওই টেবিলে এত এত খাবার প্রচুর সিলভার ওয়ের সাজেস্টিং দিস রিচনেস ইউ নো ওই একটা লোকটা যে ওয়েলথ ওয়েলদি একটা মানুষ তার একটা লার্জেস্ট একটা গ্র্যান্ডার সেটাকে দেখানোর জন্য লোকটাকে তো দেখাচ্ছে টাওয়ারিং অ্যাবাভ এভরিবডি এলস তাছাড়াও দেখাচ্ছে তোমার খাবার দাবার রয়েছে চারপাশে তুমি অত অত ঝাড় লন্টন টাইপের ওই বিশাল সিন মানে আসবাবপত্র সেগুলো দেখতে পাচ্ছ তো ডিপ ফোকাসে তোমার একটা ডেপথ থাকবে ক্যারেক্টার থাকবে প্লাস এনভায়রনমেন্টটাও কিছুটা থাকবে মানে ও যে কত বড় অ্যান্ড ওভার এন্ড অ্যাব এভরিবডি এলস সেটা দেখাচ্ছে তো সেই জন্য ওটা করা হয়েছে বাট অ্যাপার্ট ফ্রম দ্যাট ডিপ ফোকাসে তোমার ক্যারেক্টার থাকবে আমাদের মতো মানে লোকেদের জন্য যারা মানে লাইক ওয়াচিং ফিল্ম রাদার দে লাভ ওয়াচিং ফিল্ম কিন্তু মানে জিনিসটার মানে ওই থিওরি না পড়ে জিনিসটা জানার মতো আর কি হয় তো আজকে তো অনেক কিছু শিখলাম যে কত কি থাকে এবং একটা সিন যখন দেখছি সেটাকে মানে চেনা যায় সেটাকে বোঝা যায় সেটা এই সিনটা কেন ওইভাবে নেওয়া হচ্ছে মানে কেন ছবিটা ওইভাবে তোলা হচ্ছে সেটারও পেছনে অনেক কিছু আছে শুধু একটা মনে হচ্ছে ওখান থেকে তুললেই ভালো হয় বলে মানে সেরকম নয় ব্যাপারটা বলছি পিয়ালি আসছে and i would also love to hear that wes anderson's movies i don't think i'm the right person to be talking about wes anderson's movies no i really don't i i don't think i'd be able to talk about that it will take a lot of time also uh, wes anderson can discuss korte gele onek kichu bolte hoy mane there is a lot that if, if that uh, অনেক কিছু বলা গেছে অন্য কিছু Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, Ruparna wants to know about the special effects used in Interstellar. The special effects used in Interstellar. Okay. Now, this is exactly something that I did not want to do. Because Nolan, again, um, does a lot of work. Uh, his his uh, filmmaking, specifically, is... Uh, you know very stylistic and there is this very uh, specific um, 
kind of uh, uh, technique that he uses so in interstellar um i think right at this moment what i could think of is uh, perhaps if you noticed if you i think really ma'am got disconnected uh probably ma'am got disconnected Okay, Devoshri and Ayushi, ma'am had yes, a ma power. Uh, uh, there is a power cut, so she is disconnected and she cannot join uh, again. Okay, so her Wi-Fi is not working uh, because of the power cut. So one thing we can this kind of technical uh, problems are very common in these kind of online programs. So one thing we can do, uh, you collect all the questions, and uh, we will uh, send those questions to Piyali Ma'am, and she will be very happy to answer all these questions. So collect the mail IDs and uh, of the students who, whose questions uh, have not been answered in this uh, session, okay, and we will be mailing them the answers. Okay, ma'am. Then I'd like to request everyone in the meeting, all of you who have your doubts, please um, mention your mail ID along with the questions in the comment section so that we can uh, forward it to ma'am. Once again, everyone mentioning doubts in the comment section, please mention your mail ID as well so that we can uh, send it to ma'am. Before leaving the meeting, I'd like to request everyone to fill up the uh, feedback form. It's provided in the chat box.
Ma'am, I think we are done with the questions. Uh, so we can just. Okay, so they were should uh, when you formally conclude, then I'll yes, uh, disconnect the YouTube live. Yes, ma'am. So that was all for today's workshop. And uh, I think we all enjoyed ourselves. Uh, thank you for joining. And um, thank you.